Hey, beautiful, precious YouTube family. How are you? God bless you. It's Pastor Tony. Hope you're doing well. I'm praying for you. Um, as many of you know or may not know, I just got a new computer, new laptop, and I'm trying to figure this whole thing out. So this one may not be as smooth or eloquent as I would like, but I wanted to come on here and give you a Sunday sermon. And um, I love you guys. How you doing? You doing good? Good. I hope so. Um, before I start this sermon, I, I, I want to just ask prayer for myself as I'm going to be praying for you. The Pharisees are out lately. Have you noticed the legalists, those that, um, th those that obviously don't believe in grace, they believe in works. And um, I'm being attacked by them heavily lately, you know. Um, I don't know if I want to call that person out. No, I'm not going to do that. But and eh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go there. What I have found, though, is usually the, the Pharisees and the legalists are those who are either new to the faith. You know, and they've got a little biblical knowledge. You know, they've read a few chapters of the Bible or something, and they've got you know their head their heads all full and they're on some pedestal and they think, you know, um, you know they think that that they know everything. Or it's sometimes um, those people that have um, gone online and seen something that somebody else said or did. And they're like, yeah, 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 that makes a lot of sense to me. And they copy and paste it like it's their own. And they're all about it. So um, it's the new one lately going around is, is I'm being attacked by the Pharisees, you know. And, um, you know, Jesus had his most harshest criticism for the Pharisees because they were just legalists. They just wanted to go by the law and not worry about what was right, not worry about anything. Um, they just they just felt that if they, they, they didn't get it, you know, they missed the point where love is the most important thing, caring, understanding, patience, you know, those things matter more than just following a, a set of rules. Um, so um, anyway, I digress. Let's get back on track to the sermon here. Pray for me. I'll pray for you in case you're getting attacked by the Pharisees lately. Anyway, anyway, get your Bible out because we're going to be going to 1 Peter chapter 1. And um, let's see if I can do this. I hope this is still recording. <laughs> okay. Anyway, chapter 1. We're going to be, um, we're going to be talking about... Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 12. And and uh, in, in this sermon, we're going to be focusing on... Sorry, do you hear that? My refrigerator just kicked on. Uh, of course, it's always something. Like my dad says, it's always something. And and the enemy's been attacking me. I tried to record this video just, just uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes ago. I got like 12 minutes into the video. My whole computer did a, a thing. And that, and that was, you know... Uh, that was lost, so I'm starting over and trying again. But the focus of this sermon is going to be, you know, you're going to be challenged to place your faith in Jesus during this sermon. Uh, the insecurities of other types of faith will be contrasted by the consistency a faith in Jesus provides, only Jesus. Okay, so, you know, as you know, today it's, it's not easy being a Christian. You know, but we, we have to find ways to live our faith and be faithful without compromise. You know, and Peter helps us gain some insight into how to live an authentic Christ-centered faith uh, in the midst of difficult times uh, in, in these verses. So um, let's talk about timeless faith. Um, chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Now, the question is not if we have faith. Everyone has faith. You know, the atheist has faith that his rational reasoning has removed the possibility of God. You know, he has faith in his intellectual ability. You know, others have faith in their abilities, their skills, their connections, friends, family, even themselves. Everyone has faith. The question is, where is your faith anchored? 
you know, sooner or later, the storms of life uh, will begin to blow. And then the question becomes, will the anchor of faith hold? You know, when, when, when you're, when you're putting the fire and it comes down on you, where, where's your faith? All right. Peter gives us three reasons that is important to anchor our faith in Christ. A, Number one, faith in Christ is imperishable. How can that be? You know, well, look where faith in Christ is kept. It's kept in heaven. Jesus says that we are able to put 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 our treasures in heaven, put our treasures in heaven where moth or rust cannot destroy, or the thief steals. Right? We've all heard those that Bible verse. Now, um, if our faith is set upon the things of this world, then our faith will perish. Countless kingdoms have come and gone. They've fallen. Economies have been built and destroyed. Nations have been established and vanished. You know, all that is left of some of those kingdoms are the ruins that you can see in a museum. You know, only the kingdom of God has remained constant in the past 2,000 years. Our faith is to be set in heaven and not on the things of this world. That is the only way that we know our faith is imperishable. All right, number two, our faith will be uncorrupted. You know, you've no doubt heard the phrase, absolute power corrupts absolutely. It is a statement which indicates our sinful nature, fortunately. Now, history is full of leaders who started off with the best intentions, but pride, ego, other flaws, you know, over time, they got in the way. Um, if we place our faith in a leader, it is but a matter of time before the corruptible nature of the individual is revealed. But Christ has no sin. And our faith is in the power of God. God has absolute power, but it is uncorrupted. There is no pride or ego in the power of Christ. In the scope of eternity, Jesus is the only person who has absolute power. But not only that. He's also the only person for whom absolute power has not corrupted even a little bit. I mean, look how humble he was. Our faith can only be incorruptible when it is placed in Christ. And thirdly, our faith in Christ is unfading. Now, I know lots of people, as you do, who are what I like to call fad people. They jump on the latest trend or idea and about... Six months or a year down the road, you know, they jump onto something else, and it's the new thing after that. Um, if, if you're looking for an example, pull out your yearbooks, your high school yearbooks, and look at the trends. Look at the hairstyles and the clothes you wore back then and, and the tone of the culture. You know, how much has changed in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, depending on how old you are? It's a lot of time. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the faith we have now will see us through the last days. You know, that that's one of my favorite Bible verses. You know, Jesus, he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. So, I mean, if you're, if you're feeling distant from the Lord, and I have to remind myself and tell myself this sometimes. You know, I'm like, Tony, you know, if you're feeling distant from the Lord, it, it's not the Lord. It's you. It's, it's got to be me. Because he's unchanging. You know, if, if, if the relationship that I have with Christ is is somehow changed a bit, or if I feel different with it, well, then it's me that's changed. It's not the Lord. He's unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right? Now, um, we're going to be jumping to verses 6 and 8, you know, and, and we're going to be talking about tested faith. You know, our faith must be anchored in Christ in the timeless nature of him. Now, how do you know that faith in Christ will hold up during the storms of life? Why should I trust Christ? Because this is no ordinary faith. It is a tested faith. You know, countless people have placed their faith in Christ and found that the anchor holds. You know, Peter survived some uh, crazy storms of life. And he says here that what I have found the faith of Christ to be when it is put to the test. You know, Peter found uh, a tested faith is is valuable, revealing, and centered on love. 
You know, so let's, let's, let's talk about those three things. One, uh, faith is valuable. Verse 7. Now, Peter here plays upon a great image, the goldsmith. The goldsmith would melt the metal down until it became a liquid, right? All the impurities would come to the surface and the goldsmith would scrape them off and allow the metal to cool. He would then come back and repeat the process over and over. His goal was to pure gold. How did he know when he had pure gold? When no impurities came to the surface or when he could see his reflection in the melted gold. Do you see where I'm going with this? Tested faith. Peter says our faith is like gold. As it is tested, it will begin to bring the impurities to the surface. When the impurities are removed, our faith becomes more valuable. So are you going through a storm? Are you going through trials? I know I am. I believe the Lord's testing us, not tempting us. Big difference. The enemy tempts us. Christ tests us. Um, gold is the standard by which we define value. You know, we say things like worth its weight in gold or the golden boy and the golden age and stuff like that. Um, in Peter's time, as, as, as in ours, gold is considered to be one of the most valuable things a person can have, right? Now, while gold is valuable, it is secondary to our faith. Gold can perish easily, but our faith will endure. A faith in Jesus Christ will carry us through this life and even into the world. A faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of God's only Son is far more valuable than gold. Our faith is in something eternal, not in something that can be destroyed or moss and rust. Store up your treasures in heaven. You know. Anyway, let's, let's go back to uh, tested faith. Uh, tested faith, number one, like I said, is valuable. Tested faith, number two, is revealing. Um, in an example, the same same example, I'll go to that. The goldsmith knew uh, when he had pure gold, when he could see his reflection in the metal, right? Now, our faith should reflect Jesus and reveal him to the world. Do people see Christ in you? Do your coworkers know you're a Christian? Your friends, do they know you're a Christian? If I were to go to one of your, if I were to go to your best friend and say, hey, do you know what religion such and such is? If they don't say, oh, he's a Christian. If they wouldn't say that about you, then you might need to look at yourself in the mirror. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you have to go out there and, um, hold on, I don't want to go there. I am saying you, you need to go out there and tell the world. <laughs> You know, I, I, I am a Christian. I believe in this. I believe in this. And it's the truth. If you don't like it, it's too bad. Go out there with the boldness. You know what I mean? Um, as we grow in Christ, we learn more about him and his love. It is only through a life given to Christ that we will begin to see him as he really is. And... Um, you know, the end result of a Christ-centered faith is that our lives are shaped and molded by Him. You know, are you bending to the Lord's will? Um, that's a good sign. You know, I, I always pray, Lord, your will be done, not mine. You know, there's plenty of stuff I would like. I mean, yeah, let me win the lottery. <laughs> Boo, yeah. But, you know, only if it's your will, Lord. If, if, you know, He knows everything. If money would taint me and turn me into a bad person, I, I don't want it. And He doesn't want to give it to me. Just an example. Um and C, when we're talking about um, tested faith, it's centered on love, right? For Christ. Verse 8, Peter talks about how we love Christ even though we've not seen him. Uh, in Hebrews, we have the definition of faith. Now, faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Faith is the reality of what is hoped for. The proof of what is not seen. The essence of faith is that it does not require our, our sight or proof. But notice that faith is reality. You know, just because something is not seen does not negate its existence. You can't see air, can you? You can't see oxygen, but it's real. Right? Exactly. Um, 
So let's let's continue here on on um, on our third topic. You know, as, as I mentioned before, um, when it comes to faith, um, you have there's there's timeless faith, tested faith, and true faith. Now we're going to be talking about true faith. We're going to be jumping to uh, verses chapter verses ten to twelve, uh, same chapter, chapter one. Now, it, in our in our in our postmodern word, we often hear the statement that what works for you may not work for me. You know, we, we've all heard that. You know what? You know what's good for the goose is you know. No, I don't want to go there. Well, you know, so necessarily what might be good for this person not necessarily good for this person. You know. Um, so, so Peter had a faith in Christ that was timeless. His faith was valuable, revealing, and full of love. But how does that mean what worked for Peter will work for me or you? Almost as if Peter anticipated your question, he writes about the faith of others. Um, the prophets of the Old Testament found their faith in God to hold. Verse 1, chapter 10. God spoke to the prophets and told them that the Messiah was coming. He gave them a hope that the one who could deliver them was on the way. The message of the prophets can be summarized as, hang on. You know, and and like I said in the preface of this sermon, um, my, my patience is, is, is uh, you know, it's always been our cost to bear, you know, and in, in, in this verse, the Lord is telling us to hang on. You know, as he told the prophets, you know, they, and they, they waited thousands of years for, for the Christ to come. Hang on. God is working and the Messiah is coming. Get ready. Your deliverer is coming. Now, doesn't that sound like a message for people at the end of their rope? For people who don't know where to turn? Are you at the end of your rope? It is a message of hope and encouragement. It is a promise. Okay, the Lord tells us that he will come back for us. Will he find faith? It's a promise. He will come back. How many people do you know that need to be encouraged not to give up? Including me, you know. How many people in this, how many people uh, that are listening to this video right now need to be told that help is on the way? Maybe you need to hear that God's promises are for you. That is the message of the Old Testament prophets. Peter points out that the true faith is not only tied to the prophets, but also the fulfillment of those, of those prophecies. There's, there's a faith in the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus. He talks about in chapter, uh, verse 11. Now, in conclusion, all of us have faith. Atheists have faith. All these... Guys on Wall Street, they have faith in, in their money. They have faith in their abilities. Doctors have faith in their eight years of college that they went to. Models have faith in their beauty. Where's your faith? Will your anchor of faith hold in the storms of life? I mean, I've I lived in Los Angeles for nine years. I, I lived in Miami for a total of like you know, over three years, you know, I've known many, many beautiful women. And when their looks fade and they're not 22 years old anymore, they start to lose it because that's all they have. That, that That's their whole identity. You know, just like, you know, during the great stock market crash of 29, you know, these, these men had put all their faith in money. And when the stock market crashed and they lost everything, they jumped out of windows. You know, is your anchor of faith a true anchor? Is your faith built upon the truth of Scripture? Is your faith tested? Do you know how valuable, revealing, and full of love a faith in Christ is? Is your faith timeless? Or will the newest fad or the latest philosophy or the newest rapture puzzle piece or the nearest or, or the you know the the, the latest uh, you know rapture date scenario you know will that cause you to tie to a new anchor only a faith in Christ is true
tested, and timeless. Period. Now, it is not a question, or if you have a faith, it is not a question if the storms of life will come, because they will. It is the question, will your anchor of faith hold through the storms? This is the time to anchor your hope and faith in Christ. Now. Before the storms show up, as they show up. I love you guys. You know, uh, I've given many a lesson on on faith, and um, you know, where do you put your faith? Is it in Christ? I hope and pray it is. Well, family, I hope this lesson has been a bit of a to you, a blessing. And I know it's been a bit um, rigid and not as smooth as I liked. Um, having not computer issues, but yeah, sort of maybe. Um, I'm just trying out new stuff here on the computer and, and not, sure, not, not sure if I like this or that. So keep your faith in Jesus. Only in Jesus. And let me know in the comment section what you would like me to teach on or preach on next Sunday. Um, I'm just getting back into the swing of things. Sorry, my back's bothering me again. You know, as you know, for the last month, um, I've been busy with the whole packing and moving and everything from Miami, you know, back here to San Diego, coast to coast, you know, that's, that's rough and the whole job situation and, and everything. And, you know, the, the, the time difference, I'm, I, I, I gotta tell you, I'm just worn out, you know? And so, um, but I do want to come on here today. I've had people asking me, Hey, you want to do a Sunday sermon? You want to do a Sunday sermon? And, and I know that I don't have a lot of, uh, sub subscribers. Well, I guess that really depends on how you look at it. I have 637, I believe. No, no. The Lord has 637 subscribers on this channel. I've always said this channel is not my channel. It's the Lord's channel. Um, I've noticed, you know, you can go on YouTube and find people that, that have, that all they do is put out dreams and visions. They have thousands and thousands of, of subscribers. Um People that constantly have rapture date scenarios, they have tens of thousands of subscribers. And I believe it's a testimony to the fact that people don't want to hear sound doctrine, and that's all in the Bible. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. They will seek after teachers with itchy ears that tell them what they want to hear. And I put out a video on that not too long ago. You can check that out if you like. Um, I continue to put these videos out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I put these videos out for a very, very select few people, because so few people watch these. You know, I get a hundred, hundred and fifty view counts on on a video such as this. You know, and you know, I did an experiment about a month ago. You know, I I, I did a I did a lesson a, a teaching on on rapture on the word rapture and i put the word rapture in the title and i talked about the rapture and i got like 1800 2000 view counts on that on that video you know just because i said the word rapture in the title and i was talking about the rapture see people don't want to hear sound doctrine they don't want to hear anything about faith holiness or repentance i pray you do and if you're on this channel um listening to this right now then you are one of those people that want to seek truth. Um, I fully admit I'm not the most eloquent of speakers, you know, pastors. I'm not the most charismatic. You know, I don't have the most knowledge, uh, the fancy uh, equipment, the editing gear, you know, the fancy dancing bears and lights and, you know, bling bling and, you know, the amazing, you know, 25 piece, you know, band behind me and stuff. I'm just a regular dude that just wants to talk to you about the Lord. So God bless you, family. I pray this lesson has been a blessing to you. Um, get out there and make disciples for men. We don't have a lot of time left. Um, 
The Lord is coming soon. Be encouraged. You know, we don't know when the Lord is coming, but he is coming soon. So stay encouraged. Keep each other uh, lifted up and encouraged. You know what? I got to tell you, there's, I want to put out a, a, a teaching, a lesson so bad about exposing some people. Because, man, there are some people here on YouTube that need serious exposing Man, and I can call them out, but I just don't know if that's my place, you know? So, And I won't do that until the Lord tells me to do that. There's a lot of false prophets around YouTube, a lot of people that, uh, you know, the Bible tells us, if you put out a prediction, it doesn't come true, you're a false prophet. Look at the prophets of old in the Old Testament. They were 10 for 10, 20 for 20, 100 for 100. When they put out a prediction, it came to pass, period. They, they were never wrong. So these so-called YouTube prophets that put something out, you know, and it doesn't come to pass. And they're like, they're like, oh, you know what? I must have been, I didn't get the whole picture from the Lord. There must be more. There must be another piece of the puzzle. All that stuff. Wrong. You're a false prophet. I'm just going to call you out. You're a false prophet. And, and if your pride will not allow you to come on YouTube and apologize to your subscribers and say, you know what? I didn't get it right. I'm sorry. You know, I, I didn't get it right. So um, let's continue to pray for those people because they're disillusioned. <laughs> and I found out usually it's those people that have thousands and thousands of subscribers. Those people need to be warned. So I don't know if I should do a, a video on exposing people because there's one man. There's one woman on here that I need to expose to the max. She's got so many poop, so many people fooled. I'm not talking about still small voice. We all know about that that blasphemous um, false prophet. I'm talking about somebody else. Um, I will. I will. Let me. Yeah. You know what? I can expose this person without exposing this person. Um, Renee Moses. A lot of us have heard about that person. Um, she's come out with her rapture puzzle, right? And she's been wrong so many times and she's extended her rapture puzzle so many times. And she has said, oh, you know what? The Lord gave me a new piece to the puzzle and the Lord gave me a new piece to the puzzle. Do you realize that that person has made over $250,000 on her rapture puzzle book? And she never shows her face. She never tells you who she is. And she has done an amazing job at covering her tracks. However... You can't fool a brother like me. I found out who that person is. I found out who Renee Moses is. And I called her out, man. And she was like, Luke. She could not believe that I found out who she is. Um, I've told one other sister in Christ this. Um, and I said I wasn't going to expose that person until the Lord told me to, or even if the Lord told me to. But do not buy this person's book. Do not go on her websites. Do not listen to her videos. Um, she is a false prophet. It's all bad. And there's others. And to be quite honestly, I have no idea why I went off on that tangent. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being patient with me, folks. I love you guys. God bless you. I know this video is long. You know, I, I don't like putting out long videos because, you know, hey, it's 2016. We're busy people. We just don't have time to sit around and watch videos all day long, all day long, right? Some of my favorite teachers will not put out a video less than 45 minutes. And I'm like, hey man, I, you are not the only person I'm listening to or, or getting teachings from. And I don't have hours upon hours to watch YouTube videos. So anyway, I apologize. This video has gotten to almost to the 30 minute mark. And, and I have gone from subject to subject, and I really just wanted to come out and put out a Sunday sermon on faith, and I've digressed, and I've, I've went on this tangent, and so on and so forth. I'm just getting my groove back, you know what I mean? It, it's all good. I'll be smooth. I'll be good. With your prayers, it's all good. I love you guys. Um, may the peace, love, and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus watch over you always. Get your butt to church today. Read your Bible. I love you guys. Have an amazingly blessed day. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye.